Hi, I'm Hazel, and today I'm going to be walking through every single one of my add-ons as of patch 8.0 and the launch of Battle for Azeroth. I'll show you their names, what they look like, and what I use them for. I'm going to sort these into categories and then timestamp those categories in the descriptions and in a pinned comment, so if you're here looking for a specific add-on, hopefully that helps you find it more quickly. The first category is the add-ons that make up my user interface, and the first and most important one of those is Bartender 4. Bartender is my first and only action bar add-on because I've never needed another one because it's never let me down. Bartender is what allows me to group my action bars down here into these bricks which correspond directly to keys laid out on my gamepad and also my mouse. Then of course you can move bars around, you can keybind very easily. Bartender settings are accessed by typing slash bartender and this is what the options looks like. So you can see here there's a lock unlock button and once you've unlocked them you can drag them around to wherever you like. And you can see here, this is bar one. So I have that set up so that there are 12 buttons. You can make less buttons if you don't need all 12. And I have them set up into four rows, which is what gives me this little three by four grid, which I personally like. Of course, you can do this any way that you want. You can put them in a big brick in the middle of your screen if you want. You can make a border all the way around your screen. You could pepper buttons everywhere like popcorn. It's really up to you. So Bartender is really great, not only because it lets me move my bars wherever I want them, but also because it makes it super, super easy to keybind. So if I lock my bars and I go into this keybinding section here, all I have to do now is mouse over a button and then press the key that I want that bound to and it will keybind that button. Much, 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 much easier than hunting things down the keybindings menu and I have always, always done it this way. My second UI add-on is shadowed unit frames. That is what gives me this unit frame up here with the moving portrait and the customizable information. Of course, I can give you target frames as well as things like pet frames and raid frames. I don't use this for raid frames. If you're looking for my raid frames, those are default and you can get those by going interface, raid profiles, raid style party frames, and then I like to also display class colors. But for my frame, my target frame, my pet frames, and my boss frames, I use shadowed unit frames. So slash SUF will bring up the options for that. And you can customize which types of frames you want to use shadowed unit frames for. So because I don't want to use it for party, I don't have party frames enabled, and that just means it'll use default party frames. But I have it enabled for, you can see here, player, pet, target, focus, and then I can customize all of those things. So for my player thing, I can choose, do I want it to be a 3D portrait? Do I want it to be 2D? Something that I like to play with a lot is the text. So over here, the text and tags thing, I I can choose what text I want displayed over the health bar and the power bar on both the left and the right hand side. So you can see my health bar left text. I have my maximum HP here just in case anybody wants to know how much health I have or in case I want to know. But if I didn't want to know that, I could uncheck that, that disappears, and then I could put any of these things here. And all of those options are available for each of those four spots, the left and right for health and power bar. So you can really set this up exactly the way you want to, and those options are specific to the specific frame. So I'm only changing this for player frame. You can have it tell you different information when you target somebody, for example. You can spend your whole life here messing with this stuff, but I also find that it works very well out of the box. It's one of those add-ons that has a ton of options, but you don't have to use all of them, but if you're looking for my unit frames, this is what I use. It is shadowed unit frames. My next UI add-on is my nameplates, and for that I like to use KUI nameplates. If you're not familiar, nameplates are this little bar over top of an NPC's head, showing you the name, showing you its health, and you can see here there's a difference between a passive NPC and a hostile NPC in the bar color. With KUI nameplates, when you're tanking, the bars will also change color depending on whether or not you have aggro on something, and as a dot class, the most important thing is that it's showing my debuffs above the nameplate so that I can easily keep track of which mobs have my dots on them so that I can reapply the ones that are about to fall off. I've used both tidy plates and KUI nameplates before in the past, and they both do about the same thing, but I personally like KUI nameplates better. And like most of these add-ons, there are a ton of options to customize all of the different things that you want it to do or not do. I will say, I don't think I did anything here. I might have changed the text size. I think I changed the font size. I don't think I did anything else. Uh, this is one of those add-ons that is very, very good just out of the box. You can mess with it if you want to, but don't feel like you have to know all of this stuff in order to use it. Installing it and using it straight out of the box is going to be a much better experience than just using default nameplates. My next UI add-on is my cast bar, and for that I use Gnosis, you can see it right here. It shows you a whole bunch of information, including how much time it takes you to complete the cast. It shows you your latency here at the end in this little bar, shows you the spell icon of the spell that you're casting. And the thing that I specifically use it for most often is it shows me where the damage ticks are in channeled spells such as Mind Flay and Mind Seer, so that if I want to clip one of those spells and I want to stop that cast early, I know that the ideal time to do that is right after one of those little white bars, so I can find that tick really easily and stop the cast efficiently, if you will. Do I do that all the time? No, probably not, but it's nice to have the info there in case I ever decide that I want to get good. Gnosis is probably one of the least important of my UI add-ons. I don't think it's necessary by any means. I can play perfectly fine with a default cast bar, and I'm sure that you can too. But if you're looking for something with a few more options that looks a little bit flatter, then Gnosis is the cast bar add-on for you. My last add-on in the general UI section is called Omni CC, and here the CC actually stands for cooldown count. So you see here when I use a spell that has a long cooldown, that it automatically starts counting down over the tooltip in big, 
white numbers if it's over a minute and then yellow numbers if it is under a minute. That's something that's kind of nice to have, but it's not super important. I mostly got it so in a PvP situation when somebody asks how long until I have like an important cooldown or a stun, I can give them a to the second answer instead of just going, I don't know, soon. I, I also say that, but you know. Our next category is PvE add-ons, and the first one kind of counts as both PvE and UI, and that is this big flashing purple bar here. This is specific to Shadow Priest, so if you don't play a Shadow Priest, you don't need to worry about it. This is Twin Tops Insanity Bar, and what Twin Tops Insanity Bar does is track all sorts of information related to your void form. So it shows you how many seconds you have until it expires, assuming that you do nothing. It shows you what your insanity percentage is. It shows you how many stacks you have. It shows you how many stacks you'll have by the time it's expired, assuming that you do nothing. I think probably my favorite thing about this one is the haste percentage tracker on the left-hand side, because there are certain haste breakpoints in Shadow that once you get up to that point of haste in a void form, you'll want to alter your rotation. So being able to have the exact number right in front of you, so you know where you're at, very useful for that. Of course, top of the list of my dungeon and raiding add-ons is going to be DBM, or Deadly Boss Mods. If you're new to the concept, DBM is basically a suite of both alerts and timers to help you both know when to do a thing, such as switch to an ad or get out of the fire, as well as having timers showing you when upcoming abilities are coming, um, such as this detonate down here, so you can prepare by changing your position or switching to an ad or whatever it is that you're going to do to prepare. I have always raided with DBM, I can't imagine doing it without it. Big Wigs is a common alternative to DBM, and generally speaking, the best one to get is going to be whatever everybody else in your group uses so that you guys can benefit from each other's timers and alerts. Next up in my PvE add-ons is Details over here. I have used both Recount, Scotta, and Details and eventually settled on Details as my favorite. It has so many different options for different things you can have it tell you. Generally speaking, I just have basic damage meters so I can see how I'm doing in relation to everybody else. Something that I really like about Details, it's actually kind of silly, but you can actually change your Details nickname. And then the nickname that you choose will be reflected in anybody else who uses Details' as panel as well as your own. My guild went through a whole period of everybody switching their names to amusing things and less amusing things. It was just chaos for a bit, but it's a fun feature. And I just like being able to make my name Hazel without all the extra vowels and consonants that I have to shove my name to actually get it on most servers. Details has so many different things you can look through, many of them being very useful. You can see what percentage of your healing or damage or whatever um, is coming from various spells. So if you're being outperformed in a raid by another member of the same spec, you can look at what their damage or healing is coming from and then see maybe, maybe there's a button that you're not pressing enough, or maybe there's a talent that you haven't taken. Uh, lots of good information to be had from there. The next PvE add-on that I'd like to showcase is Angry Keystones, and this one is specifically for Mythic Plus dungeons. So what this does is it shows you more accurately the exact percentage down to a smaller percent than normal that you need. It'll show you in a mouse over an NPC the exact amount that it'll add to that percentage to help you plan out your dungeon. It'll show you your key level, it'll have the time counting down, as well as more detailed information about exactly how much time you have left for various levels of having done it well. Overall, Angry Keystones is just a really great kind of comprehensive companion for anybody that likes to run Mythic Plus. In the PvE related add ons category is Pawn, which I use to determine equipment upgrades. So you see here, this pair of gloves is better than my current gloves, and you can see that by this big green arrow over top of the icon. And then in the tooltip, it says it is a 2% upgrade. So in Pawn, you can either use their default stat weights, which you can see here, or you can import stat weights from a Theory Crafter or from SimCraft and use those stat weights to get personalized info on whether or not a piece of gear is an upgrade for you. Pawn is one of those tools where your results are going to be about as good as the scales that you're using, so if you want accurate info on whether or not something's an upgrade, make sure that you are using decent and somewhat up-to-date stat weights from a trusted theory crafter in your class's community. On a similar note is the Simulation Craft add-on, which I use to quickly get import strings for my characters to put into the Simulation Craft software so that I can sim my character and test things like trinket upgrades and talents. And so for that, all I do is type slash simc, and it gives me this import string here that you can pop into Simulation Craft and do its thing. I have a separate video guide on SimCraft for beginners if you're looking to get into that. Next is World Quest List, and this one has completely replaced World Quest Tracker for me. It has this list function here where you can see the name of the quest, what you're going to get as a reward, the faction, as well as the time remaining on that quest. You can see those same quests with those rewards on your map as well, just the way the World Quest Tracker used to do. But the thing that I really like about World Quest List is it has this feature right here. So I've entered the zone of a World Quest, I click Find Group, and that's going to use a spell ID to search for World Quest List groups. I can just left click on that to apply to it and then accept the invite. So if you've seen a list of World Quest groups in the group finder that are just a string of numbers for the name, that is World Quest List doing that. And if you have the World Quest List add-on installed, it'll let you see what those are actually for. When you go to create a group with World Quest List, it doesn't actually create the group for you. So I click Start Group right here. You have to type in the quest ID number for it to list the group, but you can also add other text. So I like to put the actual name of the quest here so that people that are not using World Quest List can still find and join your group. 
click list group and then all of a sudden you are listed with your group in the group finder. You can also do these functions with this button over by the quest. So left click to find group, shift left click to find group by name, and then right click to get to that create group UI. Assuming that this add-on continues to stay up and working, this is going to be an absolute must have for me in BFA because I don't like doing world quests by myself. The other world quest related add-on that I like to use is simple objective progress. And all that one does is when you are doing a world quest, it has one of these bars. You mouse over an NPC or a thing, and it's going to tell you what percentage that NPC contributes to that overall progress bar. So if you're doing one of these quests and you feel like it could be faster, you're not really getting anywhere, you can use this tool to really quickly figure out which things give you more percentage and then kind of try and gauge whether or not that makes them worth it. Next add-on in this list is Weak Auras 2, and this is incredibly versatile. You can use it for so many specific things. A Weak Aura is just a super, super custom extra thing on your UI that's usually used to alert you of something. You can see here I had an Interrupt 2 Guard Weak Aura for doing the Beast Mastery Hunter Mage Tower Challenge. I can probably get rid of that one now. You can set up specific Weak Auras, or you can import them from other people for all sorts of different things. This is my Safu's Weak Aura that bounces when my Safu's internal cooldown is off cooldown, so that I know that I can proc my Safu's again. Um, this is my Time to Die Weak Aura, which just gives an estimate based on how much damage is currently being done to a boss or a mob on how much time is left before it dies, which can be really useful for timing things like when you want to pop your cooldowns. I don't use that many weak auras anymore, and if you've never really felt a need for one, you probably don't need it, but if you've ever had people recommending a weak aura for you, then this is the add-on that you need to try it. The next add-on is Auctionator, and if you currently don't use any kind of Auction House add-on, then you need this. All Auctionator does is give you these three tabs down here to make using the Auction House actually doable. So the Buy tab, let's say that I want to buy a piece of wool cloth, I can search it. I have my recent searches over here on the left. It'll scan, it'll show you the items that came up for that search term, and then it'll actually show you, you know, the stack size, the stack price, the item price, and I can just select whatever one of these suits me and then press buy, there'll be a confirm, and if there's multiple stacks, you can spam this buy button to get all of the stacks. Makes it very easy to buy stuff, even if they're all posted in the stacks of one, you can go buy, and you can just spam to buy all of those stacks of one. So it doesn't spam up the page and it's very easy to use. Selling, similarly, very easy to use. I've got a piece of ice cap, drag it to that area, It'll automatically look up what that's going for right now, populate that price right in here, and then you can just change your duration and make the auction and bam, it is sold. So I don't use this for all of my auctioning. For that, I use mostly TSM, but if you don't want to set up TSM or you just haven't gotten around to it yet, that I absolutely recommend Auctionator for everyday auction house tasks. I don't know how people live without this. So the auction and item management add-on that I use more than anything else is TSM, which has recently been updated to TSM4, which looks like this. TSM does all sorts of things and you no longer need to get all of the different modules in order to use all the features. They're all packed into one now. TSM works with a desktop application which helps you get pricing data without having to manually scan the auction house yourself. I can mouse over an item, I can see what it's currently selling for in the auction house, and I can very easily automatically price and post things based on a set of rules. And I can do the same thing with mailing, vendoring. I will be doing full guides for the updated version of TSM. This is the only thing that makes it worthwhile for me to keep on top of auctions and price and sell greens. It might look scary, but it's only only as scary as it needs to be to grant you ultimate power. Next are my pet battle add-ons, and I'm still using the same three that I've been using for years and years and years, the first of which is Pet Journal Enhanced. Almost every pet battle add-on does something to improve the pet journal, but I always, always, always continue to use this one because I'm old and set in my ways. Pet Journal Enhanced is a great add-on that gives you all sorts of additional specific filters to allow you to look through your pet collection for something specific. So maybe I am fighting a mechanical pet, and for that I might want to use a critter type pet so that I'm resistant against their mechanical moves, and maybe I want elemental damage so that I can do extra damage to them. So you can apply that filter and then see all of your pets that you have that are critter type that have access to elemental type moves. Pet Journal Enhanced also gives you information about the breed of your pet in this part of the UI over here, and also color codes their names by what rarity they are. My next pet add-on is Rematch, which you can take a look at with this little button down here. Rematch has a whole journal interface of its own. I don't use it. The only thing that I use Rematch for is this feature right here, where when you mouse over a saved NPC, it automatically loads the team that you had saved for that tamer or NPC. Very, very, very useful when you're doing world quests or other daily tamers where you're using the same pets against them with the same moves every single time you fight them. And you don't want to go digging through your journal and trying to remember which pets you used or trying to pull up a save team. It automatically loads when you mouse over them and your pets are all slotted in and ready to go. And then my third and final pet battle add-on is Pet Tracker. 
And like Rematch, Pet Tracker does a whole bunch of stuff that is probably very useful for a wide variety of people, and I use it for only one thing. And the one single thing that I use Pet Tracker for is this right here. This tracks your enemy's abilities so you can see exactly what they have, whether it's effective against you, and it tracks their cooldown. So as soon as an enemy pet uses an ability that has a cooldown, I can see here that it's five rounds before he can clobber again, so I can easily keep an eye on when that ability is going to be available again. That is very, very handy for when you're trying to time your dodges and your liftoffs and your burrows, especially if you've lost count of what turn it is and you don't know exactly what you're supposed to do, you can usually look at their cooldowns and get an idea. Pet Tracker is also useful for alerting you when you encounter a pet that you still need or maybe you need an upgrade of, so it's a good pet add-on to have at the beginning of an expansion anyways when we're trying to do the battle safari and get all the new wild pets, but this is the add-on that I use to track enemy pet cooldowns and I can't battle very well without it. Next, I want to talk about quality of life add-ons, which is going to be a fairly vague category, and the first one I can't show you because it doesn't work. I have been faithfully using Garrison Mission Manager through all of Legion, and I sincerely hope that it gets updated for BFA, or if it doesn't get updated, that a good alternative presents itself, because manually selecting which followers to use is more effort than I care to put into a mission board system, and the mission board is coming back in BFA, so hopefully there is an update or a replacement. I can't show you what it looks like right now because it is super broken, but I can promise you that when it works, it's great. Next is Buy em All, and this is an add-on for when you want to purchase stuff from one of these vendors that has a confirmation dialog after every time you try and buy something. So I have three Bloods of Sargeras, let's say I want to buy 30 laced on ore, I can shift click here, I have a maximum button so it'll show me how many I can afford, how many I can carry, how many I can purchase, and then I have an OK, and it will purchase all of those for me without me having to individually say OK to each and every Blood of Sargeras that I want to spend. The next add-on is map cords, and coordinates were something I was very stubborn on for a very long time for no good reason at all. So what map cords does is it shows me here underneath my map as well as here on the bottom of my actual map where my player character is in coordinates, and then I can go ahead and mouse around on the map and it'll show me where my cursor is. So if I'm reading like a wowhead comment and it tells me to find a super cool secret hidden thing at a place, I can mouse around to figure out where those coordinates are, and then I know where to actually go in game, and I can also see where my player is so that if I'm standing on top of something cool, I have some useful coordinates to give to other people. I spent years reading wowhead comments and being really frustrated when people would only give directions and coordinates until I realized it's really not that hard to use them. In a similarly utilitarian category, I have bug grabber and bug sack. I will fully admit that I don't really know what I'm looking at whenever I'm looking at bugs. You can use this to send them to developers. All I do is use this if there's something going wrong, I look at what the error is in this window, and then I see if there's any specific add-on name. If I'm getting a bunch of game errors and I think one of my add-ons isn't working properly, this is the first thing that I check. If you've never had that problem, then you probably don't need this. Next is Bad Boy, and this is kind of a spam filtering add-on. It has a couple of different modules that I have, and it does things like filter certain terms out of chat windows, it can ignore specific players, and this right here is specifically what I use it for. Bad Boy Levels is filtering whispers. So you can have it filter all whispers from players underneath a certain level, if you don't like being messaged by level 1 characters, or you can take the really somewhat extreme route that I have that just blocks all whispers unless in this case they're from my friends or my guildmates. It won't stop players from whispering you, but what it does do is make it so that they don't pop up in your chat feed, so if you have a problem with harassment or you just have serious social anxiety in the game, you just want to play by yourself, you never want to see a whisper from anybody else, bad boy levels can do that. If you've ever sent me a nice message in game and you were wondering why I didn't reply to you, this is why, I just didn't see it. I know that blocking all whispers is a bit rude of me, I'm sorry, it's just something that I have to do to help manage my own anxiety. Next up is handy notes, and I tend to use this for very specific tasks and then turn it off when I'm done. So when it's Midsummer Festival and I want to find out where all the bonfires are on the map, I will turn them on, I will turn them up, I will make them very big, and then when Midsummer's over I will turn them off. Same thing if I'm leveling through Warlords of Draenor content and I want to see where all the treasure chests are, I will turn it on, I will see all the treasures and the rares, and then I will turn them off once I'm done leveling. I find it a bit spammy on the map, especially in situations like this where rares are just everywhere, but it's really useful for when you are flying around collecting stuff like that. So specifically for leveling through Draenor, I'm sure it's great for a lot of stuff, but that is when it really serves me the best. Next up is Max Cam. A question that I see every now and then is, Hazel, why do you play zoomed so far out? And the answer is, I like to see stuff. <laughs> Especially in raiding, I tend to have very poor spatial awareness both in game and in real life, and playing zoomed this far out both helps me see a wider area around me and also helps me to not get motion sick. I do notice that whenever I'm watching my friends play, I'm kind of jealous of how cool their characters look because they can actually see them because they're a lot closer than this. But if you are looking for a way to bump up the maximum camera distance, then max cam is the one you want, and you don't have to play that far out, I still have my zoom in and out, it just gives me the option to get way back there. Our next category is going to be what I call collection add-ons, which just relate to collecting transmog and mounts mostly. 
Uh, so the first one is going to be Minar's Wardrobe Helper. So the first thing you do, you open it up, you refresh the items, that's going to load everything, which takes a second, but you know. And then once that's done, you have this whole beautiful list of all of the instances in the game and what percentage of transmog you have completed from those on your current character. So I've been collecting cloth mog. I am finished with these dungeons down here from vanilla. These are the ones that I still need. And you can see I've collected 80% of vanilla appearances. Keep in mind that this largely attracts appearances that drop from bosses. So this does not track BOEs, trash drops, and nothing like that. There is the occasional trash drop that'll show up in the loot list. But for the most part, this is tracking gear that drops off of bosses and it does so for all of the different expansions. So if you're feeling like you want a real challenge, it is a great thing to do to download this and say, I want a 100% appearances from this dungeon or this dungeon, or all of them, you know, have fun. So you can click on any of these dungeons to see which appearances you're missing as well as what boss they drop off of. You can click the current instance to load it for what you have, and then you can actually open a mini list which gives you this little mini checklist here that shows you the thing as well as the boss that it drops off of. And this is what I use to track all of my transmog hunting. I have tried all the things in the past and there's nothing specifically wrong with it, but I really like that this shows me exactly where to get the things that I'm missing and it is focusing entirely on transmog. So that is Minar's Wardrobe Helper. My next collection add-on is Rarity, which has now been updated for BFA. So that when I mouse over this boss here, which has a mount that I need, and it shows me how many attempts that I have on that mount, that number is going to be more or less accurate for a variety of things, depending on when you downloaded the add-on and what kind of thing it is. It tends to be very good for things like raid boss mounts, less good for things like Paragon cash mounts. But in any case, if you ever wanted to know exactly how many times you have tried to get a thing and what the overall drop rate is, you can see that there in the mouse over tooltip, and it should also pop up when you kill the boss. So we're gonna kill him here and then we're going to loot him and we're going to get our disappointment and you can see now that i have six attempts on the armored rizashi raptor keep in mind that that five of 100 is not a guaranteed chance to get them out when you hit 100 that's just showing me what the drop rate is that it's a one percent drop rate of course every time you kill it you have the same chance as you did the last time and the time before that Another one relating to transmog collecting is can I mog it? And that is what is putting these little tiny icons on the top right of my items here in my bag. So you can see that this one has a check mark. That means that I have learned that appearance. This one has a little green box and you can see that I cannot learn that because it's plate. And this one here has a red X, which means it's not learned and I can learn it. So if I go ahead and equip this Gurubashi Punisher, which I'm kind of shocked I don't have the appearance of, That'll go ahead and equip it, and then I put it back off, and you can see that the Punisher now has a check mark, and that it has been added to my appearance collection over here in my chat log. So Can I Mogan is just really useful for quickly checking whether or not you have an appearance, especially if you have a lot of BOE greens, it can help you narrow down which ones you still need to add to your appearance collection, assuming that you're trying to 100% stuff. Next, this one is kind of a quality of life add-on, but I do use it an awful lot when I am farming old instances, and that is auto vendors. So you can see here that I have some soulbound gear that is low item level that I definitely don't need. I have some gray trash items, and I, let's say I hate wildfowl eggs. So I'm gonna type slash junk, what, and then link the wildfowl egg so that it just knows how much I don't want it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and open the vendor dialog over here. And you can see all of those things automatically vendored out of my bags. You can see that it automatically repaired my gear as well and shows me how much I spent on that. You can see how much I made from vendoring those items. If you have more than 12 items to auto vendor, then you're going to need to close the vendor window and then reopen it for every 12. And the reason why it does that is so that if you make a mistake, you have a chance to go get it from the buyback tab, which holds 12 items. As soon as you install auto vendor, it will sell the gray items automatically. If you wanted to sell that low item level soulbound gear, then what you want to do is go into the auto vendor options, make sure that this box right here is checked, and then adjust the item level that you want to automatically sell things below. If you had auto vendor before, then you might want to go double check to make sure that you brought that down because it did not automatically adjust after the stat squish. So just pick an item level that you want to automatically sell everything below, set it right there. I have found that I do need to set that item level on every character, but this add-on is absolutely worth it. I hate playing without it, and it makes it so, so much easier to clean out your bags after you do actually anything, and it makes it much less likely that I'm going to accidentally vendor my actual gear when I'm just like happily clicking purples away. Our next category is PvP add-ons. I haven't done a ton of PvP in Legion, and I think I've shed a couple of the extra ones, but there are definitely three add-ons that have stood the test of time for me. The first one is Gladius, and that is what is giving me this beautiful user interface over here, showing me the enemy team in a bigger and more useful frame than the default little whatever this is. So Gladius does all sorts of things. You can right-click frames to set them as your focus target once you're in a match. If the enemy players are using the trinket talent, it will track the cooldowns of their trinkets in these big icons over here on the right, and just tracking generally their auras, their buffs, their debuffs, their cooldowns, all sorts of useful info on this frame right here. So the next item that you're going to notice is there is a lady talking to me and that is going to be my yes, gladiator ma Lhasa. What that is doing is narrating the cooldowns that are being used near me so that I can keep track of really important things that are going on around me when I'm otherwise distracted or focused or just generally 
Battle not fine. aware. <laughs> Gladiator Loss is definitely kind of an arena training wheels. It's not something that is strictly necessary to play PvP, but if you find yourself missing important cooldowns that are happening around you, I do recommend trying it out. Just go into the filters and disable things that you don't want it to tell you, because if she's telling you everything, you are going to tune her out. Finally, the third thing that I use is Omnibar. You can see right here in the middle, and that is tracking enemy cooldowns. So I can see there are 15 seconds until the enemy priest can psychic scream again. I can see the Stormbolt just went out, and there are 25 seconds before that can happen again. That is useful for both kind of the same thing that Lhasa does, where it tells you that it's happened because you see it pop up as a cooldown, and letting you know when it can happen again. So I can see the priest can once again fear. There it goes, I was out of range. You can track interrupt cooldowns with that. Omnibar, along with Gladius, are kind of like my two absolute essential add-ons that I would not PvP without. So the last add-on that I want to mention here is something that I've started using very recently, so I have not yet learned my whole way around it, but that is Altaholic, which appears to be for keeping track of a variety of things across all your different alts. Um, here I can see who has rested experience, I can see what their levels are, I can see how much gold they have, I can see when you last logged into them. I think there is something here somewhere that shows you your total playtime across all of them. I'm a little bit scared to look. Generally speaking, if you are a player that plays with a lot of alts, this is probably a good idea. Wow, this looks like an auction house. Weird. Am I just searching my character's bags? I've actually haven't messed with this yet. I've, I've gotten this fairly recently. I got it like right before the pre-patch, so then I had to wait for it to be updated. I, I have some elementals. I have some Bloods of Sargeras. Oh, I can see all my Bloods of Sargeras. Oh, I can search for specific items. Okay, this is neat. This is an add-on that I have. Welcome to Altaholic. I am discovering it for the first time, but it seems to do a variety of very useful things. Now, I did have to install not only Altaholic, but a series of other add-ons called Data Store to actually facilitate all of this information sharing. What is this? Containers? Bags? Oh, I can look through the bags of my other characters. <gasps> oh, this changes everything. So those are all of the add-ons that I have currently installed right now going into BFA. I'll put a list of the add-on names shown in this video in the description, so if there's something specific, you can go look up that name. I recommend just searching for that name on your Twitch client or WoW interface or wherever it is that you get your add-ons. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye!